300 Blackout, a round I never owned, nor did I ever care to own until I got a SIG cane break. Let's go to the range and shoot it. That's pretty damn quiet. Subscribe to the channel so you're notified for the next time we release a video. Before I get too far in this video, let me share with you what we do here at RDR. We make soft goods. We make front holster mods, holster wraps, holster accessories. We just launched our new MH2 holster hanger, which is a 100% customizable UBL style holster hanger to fit the specific shape and size of each individual. That is live on our website at rdrgear.com. We have a full line of chest rigs, placards, canine gear, belts. Take a look at our website at rdrgear.com. 300 blackout, man, you know, I remember, God, how many years of SHOT Show was it that the 300 blackout, AAC 300 blackout came out and it was like unobtainium, unicorn tears, all that good stuff. And then blackout starts rolling out and everyone their mother has a blackout. Everybody in their mother's making a blackout gun. And I'm just like, ain't no way I'm paying that money for a round that I really don't need. Then everybody's building blackout guns and you know using their 308 cans or 7.62 cans. And then I was able to get this. Um, this was part of a horse trade, and I'm like, all right, you know, let me see what I got into this thing. And you know, I picked up the new Hux Ventum. Um, this can is phenomenal. And I'm like, you know what? Let me what's it to get the blackout going? And I already had ammo for it. Even though I didn't have a gun, I had bought some ammo during the panic buying and whatnot from my distributor, and I'm like, I'm just sitting on the ammo. But, man, I've been missing out. Um, this thing is super fun to shoot. That's pretty damn quiet. I understand why everybody says the black is my home defense gun. Because you could literally smoke a bad guy in the house not wake up the kids, not wake up the neighbors, the wife would sleep through it. All you gotta do is get rid of the body. It is so fun to shoot and so quiet to shoot. Today, I was filming Crispy shooting it and you could hear the round leave, see the brass eject, and then you'd hear the round impact on the steel. It's so slow, but it's so quiet, I mean, I made Chris take his ears off today, um, but the cane break is a little different for those of you. And this is an older gun. Um, this is a, if if we're looking on the clock for reviews, it's a pretty damn late. But this is the OG. This is my first MCX uh, lower type rifle. Um, I am considering doing some different things, uppers, um, maybe getting the, the newer Rattler upper or possibly trying to find a 5.56 Rattler upper. I'm not super familiar with all the cross compatibility of the MCX product line. Um, my goal, my buddy Daniel, uh, Jason is a good dude, so he knows a lot of them out there. Um, but I would like to get the new 5.56 short Rattler upper, which I am told will mount to this, so we're good to go there. But this gun, let me talk to something that this thing does not do, especially people out there who are looking to get one. I've seen a lot of reviews um, on the cane break and what they complain about a couple things. Number one, this does come with a faux suppressor, right? Um, a training device. Um, and that does really allows the consumer to shoot this when they get it to at the range, right? They can kind of take it out and you're not waiting, or maybe you don't already have a 762 suppressor. Um, it comes in a very, very poorly executed pistol brace. And that's an issue as well. But that's easily fixable, right? This brace thing, that was SIG's attempt to have their own proprietary thing. 
I think they kind of shit the bed on that. It's not very user friendly and it's got a really weird articulating thing that they justify by the angle of the arm moving. Teach their own on that topic. But form one of, the, one of these now is much faster. So if you do have a pistol version, get it converted. I know the tax sucks and it's unconstitutional, but at the end of the day, they look cooler in an SBR format. The fat rail for the recess can. I understand that portion as well, which allows you some handguard space so you don't grab that hot suppressor. Um, I am not a total fan of this, but I do understand why it's designed that way. The one thing I'd like to get on here is a weapon light. So I gotta do some research. And if you guys know in the comments below, let me know um, if there is dedicated MCX style mounting solutions for weapon lights. Um, this curvature here, I'm going to assume it's for weapon light circumference. So again, let me know if there's different mounting out there for MCX handguards like this one here. But back to the, the complaints. Don't let anyone tell you that the cane brake is poor because it won't shoot subs unsuppressed. Anybody who thinks that just didn't do the research on the gun. It's not going to. There's not a back pressure in a subsonic round to shoot out of an unsuppressed rifle. When you what, listen to SIG or anything from SIG regarding this gun, it is a dedicated suppressor system. It is designed to add a 7x2 suppressor to it. If you're not going to suppress this rifle, the cane brake, the cane brake's not for you. Okay, that's not saying you can't have this. It's just what you're going to do with this rifle is not suitable for things like subsonic ammunition. Even with subs, these are kind of finicky, right? I find that 190, 200 is kind of the sweet spot. 220s are super quiet, but they may not always eject. So that's when you have to either have it on the adverse or the standard in the suppressor setting. And also, this is not an adjustable gas block. You're not going to tune it. You're not going to adjust it. You're going to put it on one of two settings, an on or an off in most cases, and standard or an adverse setting. It's not adjustable. You're not going to tune it, tweak it, adjust it. It's one of two settings. So you have to understand what you're getting into when you buy one of these. Look at it from SIG's point of view. This system, the cane brake, was not meant for it to be ran with the faux suppressor forever. The faux suppressor was a placeholder for a real suppressor, right? I get the fact that you have to pay a stamp for here and you have to pay a stamp for here. That's shitty all the way around. We all agree the ATF has to go. But you don't have to so much go stamp on the back end, especially now the brace band being overruled. We have a lot of different options for braces. There are a ton out there that you can get uh, the tail hook is one of them that comes to mind. Tail hook is phenomenal. That's basically a wire stock like the Parker Mountain Kate Moss with the brace oval in the back. They are phenomenal, very well made. I have several of them. And that's a great way to get this thing into a kind of SBR by having the stamp on the cam and running the stock as is. The other cool factor, this is the new Huxworks Ventum 7.62 cam. If you have 308, AK, whatever, you have a multiple use can. This is a direct thread, comes right off, and you're good to go when you're not using your blackout. But this ammo ain't cheap. It's not cheap, but it is a riot to shoot. And I did not have a blackout until this came into my hands. And I, I really do think that um, I have been in the wrong for not having a blackout this long. So uh, I'm a convert. You know, I think this is a super fun gun. I would definitely have this as a truck gun, kind of a travel gun, um, you know, home defense for sure. I live in a condo, so I don't really need, you know, but I definitely feel with this little guy being able to have this thing folded. Now, granted, these mag pull stocks don't work all that great with the cane brakes, right? Because they don't stay closed. But that is a stupid simple, and even with the M6 Rattler, it's even shorter. So having this ability to make this as typical SIG, having the modularity change and adapt to my needs, um, and being around that is 100% hearing safe, has a 
ton of ass behind that round, a wide variety of options in the ammunition, um, and the cool factor. It is a very cool gun, very fun gun. Um, as I mentioned earlier, man, um, I'm a little bit regretful I didn't have one sooner, but um, this Ventum can was literally here at the shop. I was gonna put it on a 308 rifle, and when this fell into my hand, I'm like, oh, I now have a home for this Ventum, and I'm super stoked on it. Um, I think if you guys are looking for the MCX setups, these cane brakes, I think you could probably find them still. It might be a little less money. It might let you get into a little more modularity. If you like the wider handguard, it's a little retro, little classic look there. Um, but the new Rattlers are badass too. I don't think you go wrong either way. But I am definitely uh, happy to be part of the 300 Blackout family because this thing was just... It, even when I, Chris and I were at the range today, uh, I had shot this spear prior and he, I shot this. He goes, oh, that's so much better on my ears. It was just, it's stupid quiet. Uh, I, I, I can't say enough about that. So again, you guys, Sig came break. Uh, thank you for watching, man. This is kind of a me sharing you my firsthand virgin 300 blackout experience. But um, if you have don't have one, I can honestly say consider it right? There is a lot of fun with this, a lot of cool factor. Again, ammo is expensive, but all ammo is expensive right now. Um, pick it up as you go, but man, 3 and Blackout is a jam, and I enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you made it this far in the video, I'm going to ask you one to do one thing. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, because if you subscribe to the channel, your YouTube algorithm is going to show you more content like this and others like it. We really want to get our subscriber numbers up, so my request and call to action to you is to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, be well, take care.